Hey guys, it's Razorblade Apple Films here, and today I'm going to be doing a review on the Sprint Run Spyderco Tenacious with green G10 handles. So here we have the Spyderco Tenacious in this beautiful green G10. And this green G10, uh, you can get it right now, but I'd get it fast because this is a Sprint Run, which pretty much means it's only going to be around for a limited time. They pretty much do this for the collectors. But with that being said, I have been using this knife a lot. Uh, well, not a lot, but you know, I've been I've been using it. I, there's no knife that I buy that I don't use. So I'm I'm not buying it just for collecting purposes so that I can sell it later down the line. I'm pretty much going to be keeping this one. And uh, the Tenacious is a very very good knife for the price. It's probably the best Spyderco knife for the price. Um, the steel isn't that great, and it's made in China. But with that being said, it's a thirty-five dollar knife. This one's going to run you a little bit more. This one's about $50. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can get it on Blade HQ for about $47. That's what I got mine for. So you know me, I hate specs, so let's get that out of the way. So the specs on the Spider Tenacious is, it is made in China. A lot of people don't like that. Um, but that's not a reason for you to not get the knife. I didn't really like that it was made in China either. Uh, my friend had one before me, actually. And, uh... And I was like, eh, I, I kind of wanted the Delica more, because that was the first one I got. And uh, after, you know, he let me use his for a second, you know, like deploying it and everything and seeing how smooth it was, I was like, well, I wouldn't mind having one. I mean, they're pretty cheap after all. But instead of just going with a plain black one, I decided to, you know, get the green G10, which you know, kind of gives a little bit more pride and ownership. Um, but yeah, it is made in China, so if that's a problem for you, there it is. Um pocket clip can pretty much go all four directions you know tip up tip down left and right side uh, right now I have it on tip down I actually like to carry my knives tip down a lot of people uh, like tip up that's kinda what m the majority of knife people do but it did actually come tip down the Delica's come tip up so that's another thing to you know if you, if you don't like tip down you're gonna need like something to unscrew these but I like mine like this, so yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the overall length is 7.76 inches. That's when it's open. The blade length is 3.39 inches. 0.12 uh, inches blade thickness. The material is 8013 MOV. The drop point blade, uh, kind of a leaf shape drop point, you know, Spyderco uses a lot. This one's interesting though because it doesn't have a finger choil right here. Usually it has like some type of like up until this point it has a little choil, uh, kind of like my kind of like my Delica. See this little area right here. But this the blade goes all the way to the very very tip, and uh, there's only a little tiny. I don't. I, that's not even a choil, but you know, has a little piece of that right there. So. Uh, it's 4.1 ounces, and it has uh, the handle length is 4.45 inches. Uh, 4.1 ounces. It doesn't really feel that heavy, but you can definitely feel the weight between this and the Delica. The Delica is 2.5 ounces, the lightest knife I have at the moment, at least. And uh, yeah, Delica is overall just a lot better in pocket. But that's that's not to say this isn't good in pocket. Uh, when I wear it, I can't really feel it, so, you know, it's really not that big of a problem. So getting into the design, uh, what I like about the blade is, uh, it's one of their only knives where the blade comes all the way up here to this little area. Still don't know what to call that. And, uh, that pretty much allows you to have a lot more cutting edge. It's got a huge belly on it, so if you really needed to, you could use this for skinning or hunting. Uh, it can be good for food prep because of that long, full, flat ground blade. Blade thickness is pretty thin, so I wouldn't try to do any like prying with the tip. Though I do think the tip is pretty strong, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't think it's too delicate that it would break. But uh, yeah, that's that's probably not something you're gonna want to do anyway with any of your knives is pry. But uh, full flat ground, so it's gonna be really good slicing. Ergonomics great actually it's probably one of the best feeling knives in hand that I have it just contours to the curve of your hand I really like handles that are shaped like that with the kind of two dents right here and then the 
protruding middle part. Those usually fit my hand better than any of my other knives. Uh, the Paramilitary 2 is a little bit like that, with that type of shaped handle. So this one fits my hand very well. Pocket clip. Uh, it's got the Spyderco logo on it. Um, it's really not that big of a. It's not that good of a clip. Uh, the clip itself is fine, but it's it, as far as carry, it's going to stick out like that much, which is that's a little bit deeper than it's going to be on tip down. It's going to stick out. Well, well, yeah, it's going to stick out about that much on tip down. So, well, I mean on tip up. So uh, I kind of like this better. You know, that's just me. Uh, let's see how it looks in the pocket. So here's how it looks in the pocket. The G10 on this is not very grippy, not as grippy as the Paramilitary 2. But I kind of like that because it allows it to slide in and out of the pocket very easily. Now as far as deployment, that's where this knife really shines. It's the smoothest Spyderco I own next to my Spyderco Sage, which is another liner lock. You're able to flick it out easily without having to move your wrist. You can roll it out really discreetly. Spyderco drop it. And you can uh, flick it open with your middle finger too. <clears throat> and I can do it with my left hand too. So it is pretty smooth. It's a little bit harder to flick out with my left hand, but you can do it. Uh, lock up pretty good on mine. We'll test that lock up later with the spine whack test. But, uh, oh yeah, and one more thing, the jimping. Jimping's not bad. It's kind of rounded. Uh, so it doesn't really lock your thumb in as well as the paramilitary to, to bring that back into the, the picture. I haven't even done a review on this yet, but I'll make sure to soon. The jimping on that is just perfect. This is one of the wider Spyderco knives, uh, next to a Delica, as you can see, it's just a little bit more wide in the pocket, and there's really no cons I can think of for this knife, honestly, except for that, just, it's kind of a wide knife, but that's just how the design is, so if that's a problem for you, if you don't like wide knives in your pocket, or if you just have a bunch of other stuff you're going to be carrying in your pocket, that's something to look out for. The HCR 13 MOV steel can get very sharp but it doesn't hold its edge as long as uh, some other Spyderco steels like VG10. But, with that being said, I've been able to get a hair shaving sharp edge on it. The edge it came with honestly wasn't that good. I touched it up with my Spyderco sharp maker and got it even sharper than it was from the factory. So if you don't really know how to sharpen knives, you know, maybe you want to look elsewhere, but I, <clears throat> I don't think that's really a problem. Most people know how to sharpen knives. Here's a piece of paper that I was using for uh, the specs. So hmm, That was my bad. Kind of running out of room, but yeah, you get the picture. Very sharp knife. Even the tip is very sharp. So here's a size comparison with some other budget friendly options. Here's the Coast LX311, which is only $7. This is going to run you about $47. Uh, here is the SC Zancudo, which is probably my favorite knife uh, for the money. Honestly, I do like it a little bit better than the Spyderco Tenacious. I don't know, something about this one just speaks to me. Here it is next to a Spyderco Delica. Much bigger than the Delica. But the Delica is going to be about $60. This one is going to be about $65. This is $7. This is about $30. Uh, and this is about 47. Alright guys, here's the stabbing test with the arrow target and the spider coat tenacious. Now it's raining right now, hopefully that won't affect the uh, <laughs> the over professional nature of this test. So for a leaf shaped blade that continuously goes upwards like this, it's a little bit harder for it to penetrate because of that center aligned tip 
it stabs really well. Blades going all the way in. So I think it did a pretty good job. Uh, yeah, I think it would be pretty good for self-defense because it's a blade you're going to be able to get open fast. Grippy handles. Uh, and I guess we're going to test how strong the liner lock is. So here's the stabbing test on a piece of wood with a spider coat tenacious. And uh, I know I've already talked about this in the review, but like it feels really good in hand, even in reverse grip. That bit really deep into the wood, if you can see that. So I did the same test that I did with my Kershaw Chill, and the Spyderco held up fine. They're both made of the same steel. That just goes to show that Spyderco has a little bit better quality uh, with steel. And I actually stabbed that one in a little bit harder, too. To be fair, though, you know, here we go. Here we can see the blade between the Chill and the Tenacious. The Tenacious is a lot thicker, and the chill is a little bit thinner probably shouldn't have done that test but yeah the tip did bend so here's the tenacious lockup see how that holds up against the uh, spine wag test a lot of people have uh, little confidence in liner locks and they don't like liner locks I really like liner locks I think they're strong enough for what you need them for and they're very smooth and easy to close but let's see how the liner lock holds up if it fails I'm gonna be a little bit disappointed Move the camera back. Held up, didn't fail. Perfect. I wanted to point out is that the green G10 handles are not an olive green like I've seen in some stock photos. They're definitely more of a bluish, kind of teal green. Uh, I guess you could say maybe a forest green, but it is a little bit of a different color than the other variation they produced earlier with the olive green handles. So just make sure you, you know, know that. So let me know in the comments, actually, if you want to see a comparison between the Tenacious and the Delica. No one ever compares these knives, but when I was thinking about what Spyderco to get as my first Spyderco, I was, I, had it, I was pretty much torn between these two. I ended up going with the Delica, but, uh, you know, I kind of like to make a versus video, so let me know if you'd like to see something like that. So, in conclusion, I really, really like the Spyderco Tenacious. Uh, I really like the G10 handles, especially in green. Uh, I really like how the pocket clip uh, can pretty much, it actually does ride relatively deep, deeper than I thought. Uh, I like how it slides in and out very easily. I like the blade shape, the geometry overall, and I really like the liner lock. Uh, it just allows for very smooth opening. <laughs> that first time I failed. But yeah, pretty much opens every time. You don't really have to give it that hard of a flick. So it's a pretty fun knife to play with. <laughs> Everyone likes playing with knives. So uh, overall, I'd give the knife uh, maybe an 8 out of 10, which is what I gave the Delica. So yeah, overall a really good knife, and I would recommend you get one. 47 is a little bit much for what you're getting, 8CR13 MOV, uh, and made in China. <clears throat> but that's pretty much the green G10 Sprint Run. You can get it in black for much less, and I think the plain black version is well worth the money. So that is my review on the Spider Co Tenacious. Thanks for watching. So getting into the, yeah, 